Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to work on the mechanism for our Guardian farm. We're going to make sure this farm gets up and running today. And we're probably just going to do the bare bones mechanical side of things for now, but we will work on decorating this on streams and maybe come back and see this in a future video because I'll be returning to this farm quite frequently to get experience until we have a different set of experience farm set up and we have a bit more freedom of choice. As with a lot of these different mechanisms, especially when it comes to hostile mobs, the first thing we are going to do is set up the area where these mobs are going to be dying. We're going to open up a 2x2 two two area in the floor here that's going to be more or less centered on, in fact, hopefully more centered on, the overall structure of the monument. And if we take a look from the sky here, you can kind of see that that is going to be the center of the monument because these pillars around the outside, there are actually seven on each side, give or take the front entrance, and we want to be putting it in the central two by two of the pillar that's in the center of this row of seven around each side. And from the floor of the monument here, from this prismarine floor that we have, we want to dig down 23 blocks because we want to make sure we're at least 23 blocks away from the areas in which the guardians are going to be spawning. The floor of the monument here is at Y40, so we're going to glide on down here, and this floor that I've dug out to is at Y16. So that's 24 blocks, that's pretty much ideal. The spawning spaces are going to be slightly away from this 2x2 two two here, diagonally speaking, anyway, so there should be plenty of room for guardians to spawn without the player interrupting any of the spawning spaces. Now at the bottom of this 2x2 two two area, we're going to be placing a 2x2 two two of path blocks, and conveniently enough, there is some dirt around here that we can use. We're going to put these dirt blocks in a 2x2 two two right here, and we're going to turn all of those into path blocks. And the notable thing about path blocks is that if we place a block above our heads, if I put in another block of cobblestone like this, there is a one pixel gap <laughs> in the texture where you can see through since these blocks are slightly less than one full block tall and that is going to allow us to swipe at the guardians that drop into this area with a sword whilst preventing them from lasering us because they won't have line of sight to the player. We're going to set up a couple of other things in this area as well. We want a dispenser in this opposite wall and we're going to put a bucket of water inside of that that's going to be something we can activate to flood this area with water so that the Guardians can drop down into some water and that will prevent fall damage from eliminating them entirely, allowing a player to swipe at them with a sword. We can also retract the water from that dispenser. In fact, it's probably better if we put one in this wall because that way a button on this block will be able to activate it. But that will basically give us two different options for this farm, one in which the platform is flooded and the player kills them and another where we retract the water, they fall onto a dry block and the fall damage should kill them automatically. Underneath the platform we are of course going to be using hoppers to collect the items that the guardians drop, but as far as having an area to just stand and swipe at the guardians goes, we are pretty much all set up here. I need to add a couple of other bits and pieces, and we need a way to get down here safely without having to fall down the shaft that the guardians are going to fall down. So while we've got the beacon, I'm actually going to dig out some more of this area just so we have enough room for item filters, item storage, and a way for us to get in and out of this room. That should be about enough to get us started, and on one side we're going to set up a drop chute that's simply going to end in a water source. We could even place something in this water source, like a non-full block, like a chest, for example, and that will allow us to fall into this area, still prevent any fall damage thanks to the water block being there, but allow us to simply step out of the water block onto solid ground. On this side, we're going to set up a soul sand bubble column that will propel us back up to the surface, allowing for easy access to and from the farm. But for now, we just need to dig down so that there are two open shafts on either side here. We are also going to keep the beacon here, but we no longer need the haste effect, and I'm actually going to move the beacon slightly closer to the area we're going to be standing, because we're going to take advantage of two of the effects we can get from the beacon, which are not not related to haste. We can get regeneration and a resistance from this, which is going to be an ideal combination of effects to allow us to resist some of the damage we're going to be taking from the guardians every time we attack them. But for the moment, we're going to take this beacon down. We're going to move it down to somewhere closer to our killing area. And from there, we can figure out the rest of the design of the farm. Back here at the main base, I've been smelting a bunch more glass, and glass is not essential for the operation of this farm, but for once, it's also not going to impede the operation of this farm, because guardians can spawn in any light level. If you remember the default layout of an ocean monument, there are sea lanterns inside everywhere creating light, and so if they were subject to the same mob spawning conditions as other hostile mobs, they wouldn't be able to spawn in there at all, because the light level would be too consistent. Instead, guardians can spawn in any light level, which means we can make the farm out of glass and see what's happening on the 
the inside. So along with the glass, we'll need to grab a few more supplies from here. We've still got a ton of prismarine in shulker boxes so that we can probably use some of that for building around the outside of the farm. We're also going to need a decent amount of soul sand. I'll bring a few stacks with me to begin with and we'll come back and get more from either here or the nether if we need to. The other thing I'm going to recommend bringing with us is some ice, some regular ice, not packed ice. So I've got some in here, but I'm going to go out to a frozen ocean biome and gather a few more stacks of this. We also gathered a pretty huge amount of kelp from clearing out the ocean monument. I'm going to keep some of that in a shelter box and we're going to bring that with us as well because kelp and ice are a really great combination when you want to create large areas of water. Last but not least, I'm going to grab eight buckets of lava since I think lava is going to be really helpful in softening up the guardians for a nice easy kill. So having gone to the frozen ocean and got more ice, we're ready to start building here. We need to grab some of that first of all because we'll be using that to create water sources even though I've only brought one water bucket with me. We're also going to grab a few stacks of building blocks. I'm going to be using prismarine bricks for a little bit of decoration here. And the main thing we're going to need is the glass simply because that can provide a transparent surface through which to view the operation of the farm. For this part, I'm also going to bring the lava buckets with me and I'll need to rearrange a couple of things here so I've got room for those. And the main thing we need to do with the lava is make sure that we've got some signs on us so that the lava can be suspended inside of a glass column. All right, now we've got that taken care of, I'm going to build up a three block wall of prismarine bricks around the entrance to this drop that's going to be where the guardians end up falling to. And from there we're going to add 13 blocks of glass on top of each of these so that the entire thing is 16 blocks high. But once we're about 10 blocks up, we're going to arrange four signs around the inside of the tube like this, build upwards two more blocks around the outside, and over the top of those signs we're going to be placing four lava source blocks. And then we're going to place the other four lava sources over the top of that so that we end up with this two by two cube of lava. The guardians are going to be falling down through this as they make their way to the killing area and that's just going to apply a little bit of lava and fire damage to them which is going to soften them up for the player kill. Once we reach the top of this tube we're going to build up the glass walls a little bit more on two sides and on the other two sides we're going to build these out into eight block long bridges. I will add some glass to the outsides of these as well and the reason these are eight blocks long is that that's the length the water is going to be traveling. If you don't have a second bucket of water on you you can simply place a block of ice there and break it with anything other than a silk touch tool and that will create a water source in that space as long as it's supported by a solid block. We're just going to build up one side of this farm for now, but we will mirror this on the other side eventually, so stay tuned for that. This section of glass at the end of the water stream here is going to be turned into a 2x2, two two, and we're actually going to have two other water streams running down into this section of the farm and channeling the guardians down this 2x2 two two towards the drop. We're going to make this section of the farm out of solid blocks for style, if nothing else, but we need another 8 block long string over here, and another one over here, meaning that there will be two more 8 block long streams of water that can run down into this space. We're going to place two more ice blocks in order to create those water sources here, and those should just flow naturally down into this stream. Although, we can cut this off a little bit earlier by placing blocks on either side here with signs attached. The water is still going to flood down this way, which will direct the guardians into the neighboring stream, but that will prevent the guardians from hopping up too much in the water stream. Naturally, now we have a bunch more buckets since we've placed the lava sources in there, so I'm going to grab a few more buckets of water from the ocean and we can save the ice for a little bit later. These water streams here are going to need some glass barriers around them also, and on the outside of this prismarine brick section, we are actually going to create a wall of glass from the bottom here where the prismarine platform is all the way up to the top at this height because this is going to be the front wall of our tank. This tank is where the guardians are going to be spawning. There's going to be an exact mirror of this on the opposite side which we'll build a little bit later but we'll get one of them built so that you can see the example. And once again this doesn't need to be built out of glass but it can be kind of fun to do this if you want to see what's going on inside the farm. So for the moment this front wall is going to be 20 blocks long and 18 or 19 blocks high and it's going to come all the way up from the prismarine floor of the monument to one block above this line of prismarine bricks where we can put in the water streams now. And so once the guardians bubble up in the tank, they're going to be directed over into these water streams, which will combine them into a single stream that carries them down towards the killing area. From this point on, we're going to use the prismarine bricks to build out the rest of the tank since I don't have a huge amount of glass on me and this is a pretty large commitment in terms of glass, either trading with villagers or smelting a bunch of sand. But once again, the aesthetics of this farm really don't matter a great deal. It's more about what you enjoy looking at. From the front wall of the tank here, we're going to build out eight blocks 
blocks in Prismarine Bricks. And I'm gonna build a line across the back here. So the interior spawning space is actually going to be seven blocks wide with the eighth block taken up by the front of the tank. And that's the length of a water stream once again. So that's how the guardians are going to be directed once they reach the top of the tank and get pushed towards those water streams. By the way, if you're on Java Edition, here's a really great tip for building large areas like this. It's a little bit finagly, but you can probably manage it. If you go into your keybinds in the controls options here, change the use item and place block button to something else on your keyboard, like something like Z that's not really used for anything else, we can pillar up a few times. Remember, you're now using Z to place these blocks. And then with swift sneak on your leggings, you can crouch, move over towards the next block over, and hold down the Z button. And you'll actually be placing blocks a lot faster than you can by clicking. I learned this technique from Joe Hills on the Hermitcraft server. It's a really effective way of placing large areas of blocks. The technical community has been doing stuff like this for a while, but Joe was kind of the first place I heard about it. And placing some of the blocks in your offhand as well will allow you to hold a second stack, and that will allow you to middle click whenever you run out of the blocks in your main hand. So you can effectively work from two stacks of building blocks and keep refreshing the one in your main hand as you go. You do have to aim at the block from a slight angle while you're doing this, otherwise it won't always work, but it's a pretty great way of placing tons of blocks in a fairly short time. And just like that, this tank has been built in a matter of minutes instead of it taking about half an hour. Remember at the end of that you want to change your controls back so that this is the right mouse button and we should be good to go. Now we just need to flood this tank with water. The way we're going to do this involves getting some kelp and some water sources, so we'll need to go and bucket a bit more water. We should also probably grab some bone meal, since that makes the process a little bit faster. But we're going to start off by placing a water source in the top corner of this tank here, so that it flows down. And while guardians can spawn in flowing water, unfortunately the soul sand bubble column mechanic does not work in flowing water. All of the blocks have to be water sources. Fortunately for us, the quick way to convert water directly into water sources is to place a column of kelp up through it. This will turn every block in this column into a water source. And we can also do that with the columns that it creates on right angles, which actually expands the layer of water that we've got here because it's creating two water sources at a diagonal. But this is where bone meal comes in super handy because instead of growing the kelp up manually by placing the kelp, you can simply bone meal it from the bottom and have the column grow all the way to the top. The mob farm is really close by, so I'll just go and grab some bones from that and I'll be right back. Now that we have the bone meal, we can speed things up a little bit by placing some water sources along the edges of the tank here. Then we place our kelp plants, we bone meal those until they reach the top of the tank, and you should find that the water sources on the diagonals will fill in. All you'll need to do is place the kelp along two walls of your tank, because then the rest of the water sources will fill in thanks to that diagonal water source behavior. Now that I've got the shorter side wall done, you can see we've got an entire area of water sources inside of here, and placing kelp along this longer wall here is easily going to fill up the remainder of the tank. The tank is now filled with water sources, and we can break all of the kelp to collect it. Now remember that this tank tank is now a valid spawning space for guardians, which only need two blocks of water arranged vertically in order to spawn. Guardians won't spawn if you're within 23 blocks of every water source block in this tank, and they also won't spawn as frequently unless you roof this entire thing with solid blocks, which is a mechanic I'll explain shortly. But the next thing we need to do is direct some water streams from the top of this tank where the guardians will float up into the water streams that will move them into the killing area, and this is where the ice comes back into play. We're going to create an additional wall of prismarine bricks around the outside here. Then we're going to grab a bunch of water buckets from this so that we have enough water to create an infinite source. And we're going to fill in the top layer of this farm with ice. Oh, we got our first couple of guardian spawns in there. Well, not to worry, we'll deal with them in a second. And they're spawning under here more frequently because the ice, I believe, does count as a solid block for the purposes of preventing sky access to this farm, which will increase guardian spawns. Either way, this is a 7x20 area, so you'll need a couple of stacks of ice to do this. And once you've got the ice in place, we're going to be placing water streams along this back wall here so that they flow down towards this area of the farm. We're going to repeat those along the back here until we've got a complete set of streams running down towards the front of the farm, and then we're going to use an efficient pickaxe to break out all of the ice blocks, which should convert them back into solid water sources. With that layer of ice removed, the guardians should spawn in here less frequently for the moment, and I can swoop down here to grab some of the soul sand blocks that we brought with us. We're going to return to the tank and fight the these guardians. We need to kill them just to make sure they're not going to interfere with this process, but of course you can do that using an invisibility potion if you brought one with you. And with the guardians dealt with, we're either going to break out the floor and place the soul sand in place of where these prismarine bricks are, or we can simply place a bunch of soul sand over the top of the prismarine bricks. And already we should see the desired effect. A column of bubbles 
is created over the top of this soul sand, and anything that steps into that bubble column is going to be instantly propelled up towards the surface. Once we place the last block in, this entire thing is going to be a field of bubbles, which will kind of lag things out a little bit. Your FPS might drop here and there, and if you need to, you can always switch from your fabulous graphics settings down to fast or fancy, which prevents particles like those bubble columns from appearing behind the flowing water or behind any glass blocks, which will definitely improve your FPS while you're in this area. <laughs> but at this point, we're going to grab our prismarine bricks once again. We're also going to grab the sea lanterns that I happen to have in this shelker box. We're going to turn some of the prismarine bricks into slabs. And over the top of the farm here, we're going to create a solid roof. We're going to start it a half block up above the water columns, just to give the guardians a little bit of room to bob up here so they don't simply get trapped in the water columns. We're going to build a roof of top half slabs over this entire thing. We're going to continue that over the water streams that are going to carry the guardians in towards the center. But over the central stream here, we're actually going to leave two slabs across the middle so that it limits the height that they can reach as they travel underneath here. And from here, we're actually going to start to step things down slightly. In the middle here, we're going to place two more slabs underneath that so that those turn into solid blocks. And we're going to place a couple of sea lanterns up here. And this is really an optimistic touch, but in theory, guardians should be drawn to light sources and this will calm their AI down a little bit and direct them a little bit closer to this area so they don't fight the water streams as much as they move. And it's actually quite important from this point onwards to make sure that the walls here are high enough that the guardians won't be able to break out. They will get out of a single block space, so we need to make sure that there's a half block space around the outside of the farm here. And we'll continue this tube here two blocks high because these slabs are going to come down to form a roof. And as they flow underneath this last section here, we're going to have this be one block high with a square of sea lanterns in the center. And we can adjust this where necessary, but guardians will actually hop around a little bit once they start to leave water. So the whole point is we're putting a one block high roof over the farm so that the guardians don't move too much once they've been caught by the trap. If we want to build this up just for the sake of aesthetics, then we can. We can have a slightly more gentle slope down to the center there, but the idea is that the guardians are going to be funneled in to this area and be unable to escape. And it should now be possible to see this in action, but the last thing we need to do is make sure that the area above the water tank is completely covered with solid blocks. And to explain why we're doing this, we have to go back to the idea of guardians spawning in a regular ocean monument. Normally, it's a lot easier for guardians to spawn in open water because there aren't too many other blocks getting in the way of areas they could potentially spawn. But you'll also find an equal amount of guardians spawning inside the ocean monument because the game mechanics dictate that guardians can spawn more frequently if there is a solid block between the level that they are spawning and the sky. This allows guardians to spawn frequently inside and outside of an ocean monument even though the inside of an ocean monument is a lot more crowded with blocks and other obstacles that might prevent them spawning. And so in this farm we take advantage of that by creating a roof of solid blocks which should maximize the spawning rate inside of the tank itself. And now if we step away from this half of the farm, which should be completely functionally complete, you will start to see the effect. It'll ramp up slowly at first as the guardians take their time to spawn, but eventually in here we should start to see a few guardians popping out and into the water stream that funnels them down towards this lava source. There we go, here are our first candidates. They're coming on through here, and you should see the rates start to increase slowly as the spawning spaces are detected. And they're flopping around a little bit in there as they try to escape the water streams. Once they realize that they've hopped out into a, an empty air block, they will usually try to find water again. But as we can see now, a steady stream of guardians is making its way into that lava drop, taking a little bit of lava damage as they fall. One or two of them may occasionally flop around and die in the lava, but the rates you get from this farm should hopefully compensate for that. We can head down into our killing area, which we'll be able to hop on down here, and you you should find them all just dying on the path blocks here and their drops will be left in this chest which is happening at a fairly small rate right now since there's only a few guardians falling in here but yep every so often you'll notice a bunch of them fall and die leave their drops and the drops get carried into the chest by this pad of hoppers which I've now added an additional two to make sure that everything goes into the chest. We can decorate a little bit more of the surroundings here now that we've got the prismarine bricks down here with us so I'll place a row of prismarine blocks around the outside there to completely cut off 
the inside of this so that we can put a water bucket in the dispenser and activate it. With the dispenser activated, the Guardian should fall into this area of flowing water and be pushed into one corner, and you'll actually hear their fire being extinguished since they're on fire from the lava as they drop down into this area. At this point, they've taken enough damage that they should simply be a one or two swing kill for the player, and since we have sharpness four and sweeping edge on this sword, we should be able to take out the Guardians no problem. And from certain angles, they will still be able to see you, but if you set up a couple of blocks like this and stand against one corner, you won't get any Guardian lasers in your face and you'll simply be able to stand here attacking the Guardians. We've gained a bit of experience from that and we picked up a couple of drops just by standing there, but you can fill your inventory with other items if you want all of the drops to be filtered into the chest. Now this is where the resistance and regeneration effects come in really handy, because every time you hit one of these Guardians with their spikes out, they're going to deal Thorns damage back to you. Taking this amount of damage is naturally going to drain your hunger quite quickly, and it would drain our health quite quickly as well if we didn't have the resistance and regeneration effects applied to us. In addition to that, it's also going to take a toll on your armor, because Thorns damage will still deplete the durability of your armor. If you've got Mending Armor, that will obviously repair itself with the amount of XP you're getting, but it does limit the amount of XP that you will actually gather in exchange for killing these mobs. So you may want to set up a chest nearby where you can drop off your armor, making sure that you don't take any more durability damage, and allowing you to acquire as much XP as you possibly can from the Guardians. And just from killing a few Guardians there for a while, we have some Prismarine Shards, we have some cooked fish from the ones that were dying on fire, but we have some raw cod from the ones that we've just been killing ourselves, and we have a decent healthy supply of Prismarine Crystals. As you can see, the farm is now generating a bunch of Guardians, although a few more of them than I expected are getting caught in that lava trap, so we might actually move that a block or two down. That will ensure that the Guardians still take lava damage while falling through, but it doesn't slow their momentum of their fall as much which should mean more Guardians end up passing through and landing in the killing area. We're also going to build this tank once again mirrored on the opposite side, which should allow for more spawning spaces for the Guardians, fewer areas where they get congested, and ultimately more Guardians dropping down into the kill mechanism of the farm. But every so often you'll find this area absolutely fills up with Guardians, and we should just be able to swing our sword a couple of times to kill most, if not all of them. And just like that, we're back up to 20 levels, and we have a bunch of extra items waiting for us here in the loot chest. One more thing we probably want to do for this area, we can add in a soul sand block in the corner, we can craft a few fence gates in order to keep the water contained, and if we place a water source at the top of this and then grow kelp up from that block of soul sand, breaking the kelp again will turn this into a soul sand bubble column that's going to propel us back up to the surface. Now I'm going to make good on what I said I was going to do and move all of this lava down a block, and frankly we could even keep those four lava source blocks up there and just allow them to flow down towards this lower layer of signs here. Yep, yeah, it's probably doing less damage to them on the way down, and occasionally one still gets caught in there, thanks to the fact they're trying to pathfind to a water block, I believe. But I think that drop should allow them a little bit more momentum, and the flowing lava should hopefully push them downwards a little bit. So I think overall we'll end up with fewer guardians trapped in there as a result, and there seem to be plenty down here already. I think one of the main things we can do to improve the rates of the farm here, though, is to prevent the guardians from hopping around quite so much at this entrance to the tube, so we can always extend the slabs downwards a little bit, although we do need to make sure we're not blocking off the guardians who are coming in from the center of this water stream, so we'll just do this on half of the blocks if we can. You know what, yeah, that seems to be working a lot better. I'm seeing a lot less jumping around at the point where they meet in the center of those water streams. They do still fight for space a little bit, and we still do get the occasional lively one falling through the lava here, but once we've built the other half of this farm, the rates should make up for any of those little technical hitches, and we should have plenty of guardians on their way through here. Hey folks, welcome back. So, a few hours later, we have completed the other side of the farm, and a bunch of work has been done further down as well. But we'll get to that in just a second. We'll basically do more or less a tour of the farm as it exists right now. But there's still a little bit of stuff to be done around the edges. As you can see, I have now drained the water out from underneath the legs of the monument, and there wasn't really any on the other side here because that's resting on top of a bed of stone and gravel. And basically anywhere I dig down in all of this platform, I just dig down into stone instead of open areas of water, which is good. None of that presents a spawning opportunity for guardians, so it's not like it's reducing the rates of the farm, but the rates of the farm are really dictated by the amount 
amount of other open spaces and dark areas nearby where mobs in general can spawn. I believe guardians should now be part of the same hostile mob cap as every other hostile mob. We're just creating a lot of spaces where it's very convenient for them to spawn. So as you can see from the amount of guardians we've seen popping through there already, the rates of this farm are already pretty good. I would like to turn this entire thing into some sort of landmark. Like, I don't necessarily need to keep the rest of this prismarine platform now, but I would like to because it sort of signifies that there was a structure here beforehand, and I like the fact that it's propped up on all of these legs. But I'm not certain what I want to do with this platformed area, and around the outside, all of the terrain is very uneven right now. When the monument generated, it has actually cut into the surface of the ocean floor and the materials that are down here on the ocean floor because monuments from what I recall actually all generate at the same height and they generate in deep ocean biomes this is a deep ocean biome but those can vary in terms of the topography of the seafloor. And so I'm not certain what I want to do with this area. If I want to flatten the entire thing out and make it look very geometrical, if I want to sculpt it into some other sort of landscape and make it feel more natural, I like being able to see out into the ocean beyond this, but I'm not certain how I want to blend this structure with the outside, or if I want it to feel like it's a completely separate thing and have it look very man-made. So I'm still trying to figure that out, but of course you can weigh in on that in the comments as well. Which of those would you prefer to see? Are you interested in this looking very industrial? Would you like it to look a little bit more organic? Do you want the entire thing to be flattened out? Or do you like the fact that there is still some landscape in here? Either way, it's going to change at some point. I'm just curious about what you folks would like to see it change into. Now the beacon base we have set up over here is going to look a little bit strange to some of you because it's actually set up to receive two beacons. You can overlap the materials used to create a beacon base so that you can just add a layer of blocks onto one side and pop another beacon up there on the top and both beacons supported by this base will get the full tier 4 effect. And so what we're actually planning on doing with this later is setting one of them to resistance and the other one to strength and regeneration since that will give us the tier 2 resistance effect giving us slightly better defense against the guardian's thorns and will still allow us to have regeneration where the maximum effect you can get from a beacon is regen 1 but will also allow us to get strength into the mix as well and deal more damage to the guardians killing them slightly faster unfortunately for me right now i've only fought the wither once and i only have one beacon so in future we'll do another episode in which we fight the wither multiple times kind of similar to the ocean monument raiding episode we did the other day in which we fight the wither in a variety of different settings since we fought it on the surface the first time we did the fight but i think we can explore a few ways to kind of cheese the wither and make the fight a little bit easier for us even though it's already relatively easy compared to the fight that they do on bedrock edition now here in the center I've set up a platform of Dark Prismarine to bring both the water column and the water drop up here to the surface so that I'm not having to dig around in all of these gravelly hills for exactly where the drop is. So we can just fall on down here onto a chest like I said so we can simply walk off of that instead of having to jump and kind of wade out of the water source block that was there before. But inside here I've been doing a bit of decorating. I'm still not sure what I want to do with the ceiling so we're going to work on that a little bit more in future and the overall aesthetics of the farm are potentially going to feed into that. But down here we have a room bordered with the dark prismarine block. We got a decent amount of that from taking down the monument itself and we're now able to craft a bit more of it combining black dye with prismarine shards we have this kind of three color pattern going on with granite on the bottom and andesite on the top and people on my stream were saying that the granite kind of matches up with the skin color of salmon maybe the gray is kind of like cod although maybe sandstone would be slightly closer to the cod texture and we have a great deal of raw and cooked cod in here now thanks to the fact that the guardians as they fall are cooking in the lava and dropping cooked cod on impact but as you can see this side of the room is already set up for filtered storage storage, which I didn't want to do on camera because you guys have seen these storage filters already. Go back and watch the episode on auto-sorted storage if you have not. But this is fairly simple because the majority of the drops we're going to be getting from this Guardian farm are Prismarine shards. So the first three chests in this row are set up to receive Prismarine shards and they just have stone blocks in there as the filter material renamed in an anvil. The next one over is Prismarine Crystals. Since these are only required to craft one block, which is the Sea Lantern, we're not going to be using them as frequently as Prismarine Shards, which are used to craft the Sea Lantern, Dark Prismarine, and the two types of Prismarine and Prismarine Brick. So plenty of uses for those, not as many uses for the Crystals, and so we only need to store a single row of those in a single filter. 
Then the next two chests over are for the cod, since we'll be getting a large amount of that. You get almost as much cod as you do prismarine shards from this farm, so it's kind of ridiculous. And the raw cod is worth saving because we can trade that to fishermen villagers and use that in the near future for emerald trades at a very, very good rate. We also have the cooked cod in here, which you can, of course, use as a foodstuff if you don't have a decent supply of something else, but keeping that around can be useful in other ways, and fish is also something you feed to cats in order to tame them, so having fish for that is also a good idea. Last but not least, we have an overflow chest, because very occasionally, similar to the chances of getting one of these fish from regular fishing with a fishing rod, you will also get salmon and puffer fish dropping from guardians. So that's kind of a fun additional thing. And if you want to, you can just have that channel into a dropper or something that's going to automatically spit it out into fire or cactus or something that will destroy the extra items. You can also have that set up so that when one of these storage filters completely fills up, all of the prismarine shards and crystals and extra junk that you get will also be spat out and disposed of. But in my case, I decided to make this room symmetrical since I already liked the layout of it with the Guardian farm spot in the center. I decided to create a storage area over here and as we create a bunch of these drops, we're going to be crafting them into the different resource blocks and storing them here, allowing us to take them back to our storage room whenever we want to. So this one here can be for the regular raw prismarine, this one can have prismarine bricks, sea lanterns in the next one, dark prismarine in the next one over, and we'll store some additional fish in the next two chests as well. We got a crafting table set up in the center, and in future, when 1.21 arrives to Minecraft, we can add in the crafter to this setup, and that will be able to automatically craft prismarine shards into the different types of blocks. We'll be able to combine them in different orders with the prismarine crystals in order to make sea lanterns automatically, and we can do a bunch of different stuff with this, plus a squid farm at some point in future. But from what you've seen of the farm already, it operates pretty much exactly the same. I did a little bit of decoration here, but I have not changed the functionality of the farm in the slightest. We've just added a second module over to one side. And the main thing about using these guardian farms is it's worth being patient when you're letting the guardians build up in here. Naturally, they're going to be dying on impact until you switch on that water. And after a while, enough guardians will build up in here that you can take a couple of swings and be killing 20 or 30 of them at a time. And it is honestly worth waiting for that, because if you're killing every guardian that comes down here individually, you are obviously building up a lot of thorns damage to both yourself and your armor. And that means you have to make sure that you stop and heal regularly, or your armor is going to absorb a lot of the experience that is otherwise going to build up on your experience hotbar. I started this episode with seven levels because I was still trying to get a feather falling book to enchant my netherite boots with, and I've now already got back up to 40 levels just over the course of using this farm a couple of times and decorating the exterior of it. But the water source in here will actually push the guardians over into this corner, and once they start to take damage on their own, you know that they are entity cramming. That means there are going to be at least 24 of them on one block. You can step in here and you can start to swing at them with your sword. You'll be able to drop a bunch of them after just two or three swings, and naturally the drops have gotten into my inventory because I had plenty of space left in here. But we can always add these to the hopper line on one side so that they all get put through to the chests, and for the next swings I'm going to fill up my inventory with other blocks just to make sure that the drops all end up going into the hoppers instead of being caught in my inventory. And pound for pound, XP for XP, Guardian Farms are one of the more effective sources of experience. From what I understand, the most optimized Guardian Farm designs can get you more experience than even zombie piglin farms and enderman farms, which are the other two things that I would definitely rely on as an end game source of experience. The major drawback, of course, is that guardian thorns effect. So some people may prefer to set up a zombie piglin farm or an enderman farm simply because those two aren't nearly as troublesome when it comes to damaging your armor and having to set up all of these regeneration and resistance effects to resist the damage that you will take using the farm on its own. When it comes to avoiding that thorns effect, however, you do have another option, and it is not, as some people might have suspected suspected using an armor stand in order to redirect your attacks from the armor stand to the nearby guardians. This is a common technique when you might come into contact with armored mobs that might have thorns as part of an enchanted armor set, but unfortunately 
it simply doesn't work that way with Guardians. Something about the fact that Guardians have Thorns as a native ability overrides the usual workaround of using an armor stand and directing all your attacks towards that, while the sweeping edge effect deals with the other mobs. It will still kill the Guardians, but you'll still take Thorns damage. Instead, what you might want to consider is using Splash Potions of Harming, which can kill the Guardians in much the same way as using a Splash Potion of Harming on any other mob will. Simply stand a reasonable distance away so you don't risk splashing yourself and throw it in there. Obviously, it's not going to affect all of the Guardians all of the time because some of the Guardians may have dropped in since you last threw a Splash Potion of Harming. And naturally, this is a fairly expensive way of dealing with the Guardians compared to just standing there and swiping at them with your sword. But it is still going to count as a player kill. You're still going to receive the experience and it's a way of getting around the Thorns effect if you really don't like that. In future, we will look at auto potion brewing modules that you can set up somewhere conveniently nearby and you just be able to snag a bunch of potions out of a chest and have them prepared to throw at the guardians. Honestly though, I think it's better to just tuck a couple of blocks behind you so you don't get knocked back by the thorns effect and just take your lumps as you rack up all of this XP and look forward to receiving those drops. But folks, that right there is our Guardian farm, and you might notice this one's a little bit smaller than in the previous season, and frankly, that hasn't really affected the rates a great deal in my experience. Creating more spawning spaces for Guardians is one thing, but frankly, this farm spawns them frequently enough that adding additional materials and additional build time to the project simply didn't feel necessary. We will continue to work on the decoration a little bit, but so far I like its elegance, and hopefully we'll come up with some more cool stuff to do together around the outside. But that's where we're going to leave it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixlriffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.